Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Well guys, after a sad and disappointing time with the MSI Claw, packing that thing up and it's going out tomorrow, I just wanted one final look at it to compare these three devices. But for today, we're actually going to be unboxing the thing I told you guys that I picked up. Now, if you watched the last episode, you'll know that this was coming and it's not a huge surprise to you. But because so many people have the Lenovo Legion Go and they always ask me about what mods there are and what can be done and how's their performance. And I just hear so many good things about the Lenovo Legion Go. And since I was extremely satisfied with their laptops as well, if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out. I have done reviews on two Lenovo laptops that were insanely good. So without further ado, let's open this up. Um, I will say uh, one of the subscribers sold this to me. So thank you, Laz. Thank you, brother. Um, I appreciate the deal on this. And at the time, this was the cheapest Lenovo Legion Go on the internet for sale. Now, the question I have is, should you buy a used Lenovo Legion Go or used handheld? What are the things that you might experience or might see when you buy a used handheld? Is the experience the same? Is it worth buying the new one? Is it worth saving 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever the price difference is? Is it worth it to buy some of these things used? Well, I'm going to go over everything and tell you exactly how I feel, as always. So, Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to share this with you, but I'm excited. Let's uh, let's dive right on in. I'm sure most of you have already seen a Lenovo Legion Go unboxing, but this one will be a little different since it has already been opened and used and loved and, you know, all that good stuff. Aha! Oh, by the way, um, I did get some uh, skins thrown in with this, so thank you, Laz, for throwing those in. That was, you know, a really huge, huge bonus that you didn't have to do and I, I appreciate it thank you brother much love um so this is the original backplate that comes on the lenovo legion go and um this is already a hint to what might else be inside but this is a d brand skin these skins are pretty cool i myself am usually not a skin fan just because it's such a pain to apply them and remove them and you know it's just hard to get them perfect because there's always like an air bubble and that stuff drives me nuts and then the stuff peels up on the sides i've been like I've had the worst experience with skins, so I generally just try to take really good care of my devices, um, but then it bites me in the butt. Like, I actually just scratched my ally screen the other day, and I was like, no, it hurt. So, oop, I ripped the packaging. Okay, so this is how it comes like this. It's the little protective paper cover with some graphics on it and shows you the FPS mode for the Joy-Cons or joysticks, whatever you want to call them. So... We'll set that aside. We've got some paperwork in here, an owner's manual or safety guide. We've got the charger. Let's see what this charger looks like real quick. So, nice slim charger, a little 65 watt charger. Very nice Lenovo. I like their charger. It's not big and bulky and it's actually pretty nifty good charger so we'll set that aside um, I did notice part of the zipper broke off in shipping I guess it probably just rattled loose I can fix that I think these um, I think are kind of known for doing this I've actually seen a few of them I'm just gonna set all this stuff aside I've actually seen a few of these in the community that their zipper pull tags their zipper pull tags fell off and there's an easy easy fix for that you just put that back in there and then you get like a pair of pliers and you pinch that downwards um, and close the gap see like that one's got a much tighter gap that's all it is you can you can easily fix that so here's the case um, that's actually a cool thing about the Lenovo Legion Go is you do get a case Unfortunately, you don't get a case with the Ally. You don't get a case with the MSI Claw. You don't get a case with a lot of these handhelds. Some of them do, some of them don't. But like having a case is actually pretty handy. And it's even got a little USB pass-through so you could charge it while in the case, which I don't really recommend doing, but uh, Gamers Nexus did cover that in his video. And he said it was safe, so I trust that. I just don't like doing it. 
Um, just in the event that you accidentally bump the power button and it turns it on, it could run hot. So, okay, so here we go. I'm opening up this, we'll set that aside. This, I guess, could be part, oh yeah, it's part of the little dock for the FPS mode and stuff. Ah, cool. So we'll set that aside. And I'm gonna go through this thing completely, completely honest. Um, I really don't want to hold anything back, but I also don't want to like cause offense to anyone that sold me anything used because of course it's used. It's going to have some caveats with it, but I think I mentioned it before the skins and stuff. When you buy a device that has skins on it, just, you know, be prepared to like put new ones on if you are bothered by like peeling and stuff. That's why I'm like super duper 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 thankful that he threw these in because that's like the first thing I'm going to do is unpeel these skins and put fresh ones on just because I like the way fresh stuff feels. Um, that is one of the experiences is opening something for the first time, knowing your hands are the first hands that touched it. Um, I'm using gloves just because this is a fingerprint magnet. I'm trying not to make it worse. And these skins are just so fingerprinty uh, that I just, I generally like to open my stuff with gloves off camera anyways, just, just for safekeeping. Um, so yeah, the hint earlier that I gave you was the back plate. So the stock back plate, actually is not near as vented as this backplate. This is a 3D printed backplate and you can tell it's 3D printed. Um, you know, there's there's definitely no no doubt that it was 3D printed. You know, the fit and finish on 3D printed parts is never perfect. It's, it's nearly impossible to print a part this big um, and to not have warping or any type of like design flaws. But with that said, it actually looks pretty dang good. Um, I have tried to print back plates before and I failed. They just didn't fit. So the fact that this even fits and it's this wide, uh, there's definitely a feat in and of itself. So uh, big props to whoever printed this. And yeah, so I noticed that some of the things might need attention. Like there's a screw missing out of here. I don't know if that's supposed to be missing. And then just like, some of these screws might need to be replaced. They might actually be too tight. I don't know. Um, like that one looks to be really deep in there and then that one doesn't. But these are just little quirks that I notice. You know, and just do some general maintenance, lube up the, you know, the switches, like the trigger switches and lube up the joysticks. I'm gonna go through this whole thing and basically refurbish it to like new. And it'll look like a completely different handheld in a matter of a couple of hours might not see it today but you'll probably definitely see it in another video uh, you know other stuff like this like i noticed like it's definitely been used so like this bottom part right here looks kind of worn but that's the kind of thing that you have to be okay with um and willing to accept and replace stuff when you buy stuff used you know some stuff is just going to be used because it's it's used you know you can't get a perfect device unless nobody used it and then at that same time, you're gonna pay the moon for it because people um, with these pristine mint condition devices aren't gonna let them go for a deal. So, you know, I paid, I'll just go ahead and say I paid 550 for this, which was the cheapest one I could find. And I knew there was going to be some things I'll have to do to it. Like it's only got a 512 gig um, NVMe in there. So we will have to upgrade that to the two terabyte, which I already have. There's quite a bit of stuff that I will end up doing with this but it gives me a little bit of room where I saved the money to spend the money so to speak because I had already ordered some mods uh, I even have one of our channel sponsors supposed to be sending me something over I won't spoil that but I do have a lot of mods planned for this but I just wanted to quickly do an unboxing and just show you that if you're willing to save some money and you're willing to replace some things refurbish some things look on your local marketplaces look on forums look on groups look on anywhere there's people that enjoy handhelds you know just ask the community hey does anybody have any handhelds that they'd like to sell you know i'm looking to buy um a so-and-so used and i don't have enough money to buy one brand new because after buying the claw i i definitely didn't have the money for it it definitely was a blessing to be able to find a good friend who would sell me theirs because they had just picked up another handheld anyways and this was just going to get set aside so it was definitely um 
useful to sell stuff like that because when you have multiple handhelds and you don't need all of them then you know why not sell them while the values are up uh, now, side note, I do think the prices on these will eventually drop. I've been hearing rumors that they're supposed to drop soon, but I can't confirm that, like, at all. That's not an official statement. I haven't got any official word. It's just merely speculation based upon what other people are seeing, probably, in the market. Um, in Europe today, the Claw actually dropped uh, for the 135H in price my stupid alerts going off uh the 135h actually had dropped in price so i think those are going to drop uh on the 155h as well the rog ally has already dropped to about 500 bucks i believe and that in and of itself is a steal so the prices of these things are coming down because the market is so flooded with them sales are starting to kind of level off so a lot of these retailers, a lot of these manufacturers are just really looking to, um, you know, offload some of these things, not necessarily in a bad way, but just they don't want to be sitting on a bunch of inventory. Um, it's just not good for business at all. So the, the demand was really high. The prices were high. That's to be expected, but demand is low. So prices are going to keep coming down even lower so is it worth picking up one of these new today in 2024 at $800 or whatever it's going for I I don't know yet I it's still too early for me to tell but based upon what I see here um, I would just venture to find a used one rather than buying it brand new because I don't think it's worth quite $800 in my personal opinion yet without actually like going through the whole thing but what I do believe is you can pick these up. I've seen a couple on eBay for $550 to $600 just as of this week. And even some that are fully upgraded for under $600. bucks. It just they sell quickly. So if you're looking to pick one up, just make sure the seller's got good feedback. Make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Um, ask for lots of photos. Ask to see if there's any controller drift, which we'll revisit later on these. Um, ask if there's any discrepancies with the battery or you know just cover your bases you know have it to where you have a, a text log of questions being asked so if they 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 uh don't deliver on those comments and promises then maybe you have some recourse with the selling platform uh facebook marketplace could be a good place to check i don't have facebook but some people do uh reddit even can be a good place i've heard i don't buy stuff on reddit either um, generally eBay, Amazon, and that that's Discord too. But you know, you need to just make sure that you know these people personally. Um, like I, I know everyone in my Discord uh, on a pretty good level. If you're in the Discord, you know, you you just know we're all family there. It's it's definitely the home for people who want to be treated fairly and kindly, and you know, we welcome you with open arms. So if you want to see content like this you want to support the channel in any way the discord's free but it does support me because you're you're helping activity in there grow you're helping spread the word about what i'm working on you know you you become a part of the family so to speak and and that in and of itself helps build the community and in a more meaningful way than you could ever imagine and subbing liking all that stuff helps too but just growing the community is all i am about i really can't wait to dive into this on tweaking and tuning and getting it all set up uh just opening it up and getting into windows i can already see something i really like and it is that idle memory usage if my camera will freaking focus come on there we go no yes no yes 32 percent Sitting idle before any tweaks at all have been applied. This is completely stock factory, out of the box reset, 32%. The claw was running 62%. The uh, ally was running about 45 to 55%. It just varies depending on what stuff's running. But that's crazy. That's actually a good sign. So. Having less services running in the background can help your 1% lows if you're struggling with the amount of VRAM you have allocated uh, or RAM allocated. So you need to have a good balance there. We're going to dive deeper. I know I'm rambling. I'm going to head on out. I have like 400 videos to edit this week. I am just like mind blown at this point with 
how fast things are coming in and how many sponsors are reaching out for me to review stuff. So I love it. You know, if it's good stuff, send it, you know, I'll, I'll definitely review it. But if you know it sucks, then I'll probably tell you I'm too busy to do it polite, politely. You know, I, I don't want to like, you know, tell people I don't want to review your stuff because I know it sucks. I'm just going to say, hey, I've got too much on my plate this week. I'm really busy. Um, people know that they can expect good quality products on this channel. You know, I don't want anyone to buy something on the advice of what I have given them and be disappointed because there's a lot of channels out there, especially lately, who are on that grind set and more power to you. I, I really, really um, commend the hustle, but at the end of the day, it's, it's grind set. It's a hustle. So just be careful out there, guys. If you're watching other channels, whatever they're pumping, whatever they're selling, just, you know, do your due diligence, ask people who own the devices, join the communities before you buy the devices, see what kind of issues they have, because you might be surprised that some of these people that are showing the results for the claw and how high the benchmarks are, it doesn't equate to real life performance, which hopefully you'll see that in the next video. I know I always say the next one, the next one, but I have worked on a complete tuning guide for the claw to show you the best it could possibly do. And that tuning guide will be useful for anyone in the handheld space as well. Well, look, I love you guys, but I can't spend all day with you here, but I can definitely spend all day with you in the discord and chat it up. So just, just hop on over there. Just, just come hang out. I got you covered. Well, I hope you were looking forward to this as much as I am. I definitely can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So I hope all of you have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.